right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Now, ladies, we gonna break it down and just okay. A few so, um, now that I'm in Final Cut Seven and I've got my card connected to the computer um, to import the files from the Canon XF100 camera, I move here into Final Cut Pro and I go to uh, Log and Transfer. From the Log and Transfer window, I go to the most recent video. I can check to see that it's the right one here. Yep, I'm playing the guitar and singing. and. Um, I can name that file over here, clip name, and call that um, tutorial video. And then I can just tell that to import. So here it is. While that's doing that, I also have some footage from uh, the DSLR Canon 60D, also in the computer, and that's showing up on this list here, the MVI, as opposed to the double A zero numbered files. And uh, let's see here, is it this one? No, nope, it's gonna be this one here, yeah. Okay, so I can also name that one Tutor, Tutorial Video B, Bcam. And I can tell that to also import that. So luckily, on the bottom of the screen right here, you can see that there is a little transfer bar, and that'll let you know that you've got some time. De and depending on how large your file is, that might be really quick, might be really short. Um, as well as if you're using um, a compact flash card reader that is using USB instead of Thunderbolt, um, the, the amount of time that it takes to transfer files from the XF100, which is a broadcast camera, uh, is is multiplied by quite a bit of time. Um, so it really is nice to use Thunderbolt. Now that we've imported the CF and SD cards into Final Cut 7, we're ready to go into Final Cut 10, Final Cut X. And so now that I'm into Final Cut X here, I'm going to put in uh, a new event. And in that new event, I'm going to give a title something like Tutorial video uh, gear slits. Uh, so now I'm going to import files into Final Cut 10, specifically the files that I just imported before. Uh, they are in snow. Now that those files are imported that way, I'm going to need to go into Logic or Cubase or uh, Pro Tools or whatever particular uh, DAW that I'm using for the recording that I did. Okay, so I'm, I'm here in Logic, which is the DAW that I use. Um, and I've done a little bit of uh, limiting and compressing, mostly just because the song I recorded was so quiet in the beginning and then so loud and dramatic at the end. Um, otherwise it's effectively clean, uh, but basically what we're going to do now that I've exported out of Logic, I'm going to import the file from Logic that I've used into Final Cut X. So I'm going to import a file. Okay, so now that we have all of our audio clips and all of our video clips imported into Final Cut 10, um, what we want to do is we want to take both uh, clips, both video clips, and synchronize each of them independently with the audio because we have two cameras. If we only had one camera, this would only be one step, synchronizing one audio clip with one video clip. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to select these two. I'm going to synchronize the clips. And then I'm going to select these two and I'm going to synchronize these two clips. 
Now that I have these two files uh, as synchronized clips with the right audio, I'm going to then uh, take the two new synchronized clips and synchronize them together as a new multi-camera clip. So this is probably unnecessary for most of the people at Gear Sluts because you may not be using multiple cameras. Uh, but for this particular case, I am. And for those of you who are also doing that, it's probably very useful to know about it. So I'm going to call this Tutorial Multicam. <laughs> or Tutorial, tutorial Multicam. Tutorial Multicam. OK. And I'm just going to let it do everything automatically. So I'm going to hit Use Automatic Settings and hit OK. OK, and that was pretty quick, connecting them two together. Um, it looked like it was going to take a while. It, got, it started to hang at around 30%. So then I decided even to pause the clip here and start a new one. And the moment the camera hit and record, it was done instantaneously. So um, that's great. Now that we have the new clip right here, we take that new clip. And you can see it on the screen here as one of the cameras. I'm going to take that. I'm going to drag it into the timeline here. And you can see here that it's only on one camera. So what I need to do next is go into this window here and on the top right there's like a light switch right there. On that light switch I need to show uh, angle viewer. And what that does is it allows me to switch from one camera to the next um, while I'm playing it. So for example, right here I'm walking around doing some clapping um, at the very beginning. Let's turn that down a little. Uh, just so that when I do just so that when I choose to uh, put the audio together from multiple sources, the WAV files that meet, no matter where I am in the room or how subtle or how loud something is, um, it'll easily find that. So big tip, you know, uh, in movies they have a clapper board. It's that little thing saying the scene and the number. Um, same kind of process. The idea is to get that audio down into one spot. So while we're playing this here, I'm going to just mute my speakers. Uh, what you can do is you can see this screen here. I'm going to move this forward to about here. And what you can see is that I'm playing uh, from the perspective of seeing the camera and me. But if I wanted to switch to another camera, I would just click right like that. And then that switches angles while it's going on. Uh, makes for a much more appealing way of watching. Uh, <sighs> I'm going to then now... Uh, just quickly end this video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce it out to a media, and then you can see the process of bouncing it out. So let's just say this was the finished product. And now that I'm done, I'm happy. I've edited everything. I've shrunk it like from the beginning part and the end part, which is easy to do. If you look at the screen, you can see the me moving and dragging that like that, um, as well as with a cutting tool. To, to cut here with the blade, for example. Whatever, you can, you can edit however you want, just like in, in a DAW. But now that I'm done, I can go to share. And as sharing, I can either send to compressor or I can export the media. Um, usually, I export the media so that I can save it in a particular place in the large, uh, high-quality format. And then I can open up compressor and then squish it into something smaller that's good for YouTube. So I'll show you that process. So I'm going to just hit Export Media. And I'm going to just let it set at all the same audio and video settings that it currently has. Um, and hit Next. And name it. I'm going to call it Tutorial Video High Quality. And Put it right there. And that'll take a little bit to, uh, to export. Not too long, I, um, maybe 10 minutes. Uh, but when, I'm, when I get to using compressor, that'll take quite a bit longer instead of being in um, a real time. Like that video probably ran for seven minutes while I was setting up, etc. Um, and since I didn't edit it down, it'll probably take around there. 
but to convert it from a bunch of high quality data from high quality cameras into something that is missing a, a bunch of the back end metadata, uh, that will probably take me 20 minutes, maybe. Uh, if you have a, I have a brand new iMac, so it, it doesn't take that long. If you have a year old or two year old or three year old computer or you don't have an intensive uh, graphics processor, it could take an hour, could take two hours. Um, but I'll be back to show you the product here. Okay, so um, we just exported from Final Cut a large high quality file. And just right here on the screen, you can see a little bit of it um, moving forward there. Unfortunately, I didn't have a camera person with me and I left the camera on autofocus without telling it what to focus on. So I'm not totally in focus on the front facing camera, but that's fine. This is a tutorial video. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to take that file. What we do is we take the video here and we drag it and drop it right into a uh, compressor. And what that does is it allows us to then just go down to the drop down menu here and select from video sharing services um, 1080p video sharing, 720p video sharing, or smaller. But these particular settings are designed to play well with YouTube. And what that means is that they play well with YouTube. So when you upload it, if you upload a file that does not play well with YouTube, what ends up happening is the video doesn't work and the codec has an error and then you spent two hours uploading to YouTube and nothing worked. Um, and then you have to go back to the drawing board of bouncing out your audio and video to make it work. But for this particular video, uh, we have 1080p video and I'd like to keep it that way. So I'm going to take that, drag it and drop it into the settings destination. And then all I have to do is submit and it will then create a sharing file for me in the same folder as where the video was that I just copied it from. So that's going to take a little while. Um, on this particular video, it might take about, about the same amount of time as real time, so like to watch it. Um, it could be a little slower, it could be a little faster. We'll be back in just a second. All right, so Compressor has finally finished um, bouncing out the video. And so what we see on screen here is the tutorial video that I made, and then the next file is the tutorial video uh, sharing movie. That's the one that I would uh, upload to YouTube. Uh, the original video, you can see right here, for just a, just a couple minutes, like this video is only, let's see here, um, only about four minutes long. So that's almost, almost a gigabyte per minute. Uh, right here, it's now, for the entire thing, 663 megabytes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you right here. I would, I would open up YouTube. I'm here on my channel. I would go to upload a video. And on a Mac here, I believe you can just drag the file here right into there. Um, and I'm not going to do it right now because uh, I don't actually want to upload this video. I want to upload it embedded uh, with the video you're watching right now. So that's it. It's that simple. From the beginning, we recorded onto the DAW and onto both cameras. Um, we did some clapping to make sure that we had uh, the audio easily synchronized. We brought it in to our uh, DAW, exporting at 48 kilohertz, because that's the, what the videos are recorded for the audio at. Um, we imported uh, the CF cards and the SD cards in Final Cut 7. Then we took those files and imported them into Final Cut 10, Final Cut X, and we synchronized uh, the audio for one clip to the other, and then we synchronized the audio to the other clip for another, and then I brought those together as a multicam clip. Then I bounced it out, um, took that file, opened it in Compressor, compressed it to a YouTubeable sized file, and then we can just upload it to YouTube, and that's everything you do. All right, cool. Um, if you guys have any questions or any comments, just let me know. Um, if there's some information, I, if I have the answer, I will definitely give it to you. All right, cheers.
baby, don't mess around because she loves me so. Yes, I know for sure. But does she really want it? But can't stand to see me walk out the door. Can't stand to fight the feeling Cause the thought alone Is killing me right now Oh, thank God for mom and dad For sticking two together Cause we don't know how Hey, ah uh, Now, fellas, you're all it's cooler than being cool. Oh, hear me when I ask it. I said it's cooler than being cool. And all right, all right, all right. down in just a few seconds here don't make me break it down for nothing I want to see you all on your all's baddest behavior oh shit